さて電話に出なかった言い訳を聞こうかもう無事ならそれで結構いろいろと手を回して君の妹に連絡が取れたので私も一安心だメールといい安否確認の仕方といい怖いつうかなんか様子か俺これから千葉,千葉に行くんだまだメール見てなかったのかはあ、ピンキー遅いしえなんでお前らいんのなんでって部活じゃんゆいさんやっはろーかもちさんやっはろーその挨拶流行ってんのかバカっぽいからやめろゆきのさんもやっはろーいやこんにちはこまちさん、えー、こまちも呼んでもらって嬉しいです<笑>妹への愛情を利用しておびき出すとは卑怯なでも一番卑怯なのは妹ですよねはじまーんいや<笑>俺はこのことを予見してあえておびき出されたふりをしていたのだ結果オーライ今日から神信じちゃうとつかさんヤッハローうんヤッハロー何それかわいいもっと流行らせようぜ You know half of me wants to say it's really disturbing that h i k i g a i is like saving grace it's totsuka uncertain in these situations The other side of me wants to just bust out laughing, and then there's like a small percentage of me that's just, that just wants to be like every Snafu fan, every time we greet each other now, we say, Ya hello. We don't say hello, we just say, Ya hello. Sorry. I think that should become a thing. Yeah, it's gonna become a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Game Free Trail Game Vlogs here, hit to bring you another Snafu episode review. I believe this is episode seven. Um, I know someone commented and was like, dude, you're like an episode behind. Crunchyroll, due to licensing issues, had to like release the episodes a week behind. So, yes, I know technically if I wanted to watch the fan subs, episode 8 is out. Yeah, episode 8 is out, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to watch it on Crunchyroll.、Uh, but that's besides the point, I just figured I'd go ahead and mention that because someone did mention it in the comments and I wanted to clear it up. It's not really because they didn't want to simulcast it like that, it's because they couldn't. But、um, the episode itself was kind of an interesting one. I had actually re watched that, I think, about three or four times because there were certain things either I didn't get or I wanted to make sure I understood right.、Um, this is another one of those Yuki Noshita episodes, except the difference between last episode and this episode is is that this one has a lot more Yui centric themes in this episode, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, like there are things in here more focused around Yui than, let's say, the last episode. And we can kind of obviously see that Komachi has kind of integrated herself with the girls, and they're just kind of like, oh, Komachi, ha, ya, hello. And she almost caught, you saw in the scene, she almost caught her with that same damn. I, I kind of I kind of wish she had got halfway through the sentence instead of getting like, ya. I wish she had got like, ya, hello, oh,、uh, hi. <laughs> like, I thought that would have been funny. But, anyways,、uh, the episode itself was interesting, and it does bring up a good few points, like most of the episodes do. Um, it's, I knew this was going to happen because as soon as I saw Summer Break, I'm like, okay, it's going to be one of those episodes. They do this a lot. When you have a character who doesn't like to be bothered, they always end up getting bothered and being harassed for some stupid ass reason for another. And this one was because his sister betrayed him, and now he was forced to go on a trip where they had to help out at this camp that they used to go to when they were middle school kids. And at the same time, while helping these kids, they just happen to find this one particular girl who's being ostracized, which obviously would correlate really well with Yuki Noshita and Hikigaya, while also hinting at some issues Yui, Yui has, or some issue that Yuki Noshita t h i n k Yui used to have.、Um, and probably some, well, there's a lot of underlining issues because the whole thing is like, you have this girl, Rumi. They keep seeing this chick.、Uh, You know, everyone at her age, she's in like this group, but like she's not really included in the group. She's kind of just there because she has to be there. And it's, you can tell that since awkwardness, and they use Hayato as a means to show how handling different types of kids with different issues doesn't always work for every type of child. Like, for example, Hayato obviously has that nice guy approach about everything. You know, he tries to befriend them and then he tries to make them and trying to force them into the group. Maybe not really force, but to, it, it feels like forcing because of the way it, shows, it comes off. Because it's like, oh, hi, how are you? Do you like curry? You want to come with us and look for the checkpoint? And he kind of tries to integrate her in the group, but it doesn't work because, for one, Rumi is one of those type of s u n e d e chicks who's like 
not really sociable in the first place. On top of the people that, on top of the fact that people just the girls, the other girls don't even seem to be bothered with her to begin with. Actually, they're just kind of making fun of her. And uh, that that conversation she has with Higaya, Yui, and Yuki Nosta, like during the middle half around like them cooking food and everything. Um, that's where you kind of get the whole backstory. It, it kind of goes into the whole concept of the social groups, where it's like, well, you know, you know how you were a group of friends, and when you were younger, you didn't really have your own mindset and ideas and morals set up first, so you kind of used to flow in with the group. If I'm understanding this correctly, and I may be messing this up, someone correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is, is that she was in those type of groups with the rest of the girls, and they were doing that to other girls. But, you know, obviously after a while it would end and everything else, but, you know, then you have, you know, obviously in these groups, you know, one person says something and everybody jumps on the boat because no one really has their own unique thoughts yet. And before she knew it, she was the one being ostracized, ostracized and being kind of excluded from everything. And she ended up developing a complex out of it and kind of just saying, fuck it, and fuck everybody. But the problem is because she's young and she's naive, she didn't realize that just be, because her whole plan was like, well, when, you know, I go to middle school and they, you know, I'll make friends with the new kids. And you can know she's like, that's not how that's going to work. It's you versus a group of people. The new kid is not going to group with this one girl who's by herself. They usually group with the group. And the group is probably going to get to them first anyway, being like, oh, well, she's this, this, and this, feeding them a whole bunch of lies. They, 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 they don't that aren't necessarily true about you and then they end up joining that group and becoming a part of that group and that group that's making fun of you and, not, and you know excluding you from everything gets bigger and that's the issue and that's that's kind of the situation that they're trying to help her but at the same time we have a lot of ridiculous comedy and borderline serious moments for example Hiratsuka Sensei has been integrated into the into the series Pretty well, I was actually surprised we didn't see Saika. I figured Saika would have been part of this group, but then again, they just might be a person that, they might, it might be how this little girl is going to be, where it's like you help them and then we just don't see them for a while. Granted, it would make more sense not to see this girl, because she's like an elementary school kid, whereas Saika's in their class. I would think, well, maybe they would integrate her in some stupid way, I guess not. Um, I know this isn't going to last long, because I know there's like some type of school festival arc that's supposed to be that they're animating in this season, so I'm assuming that how this is probably going to go is that, you know, this will probably last maybe an episode or two more, and then the rest of the series will be the school festival thing. Um, but, you like, you have Hiroko Sensei doing the whole thing. First off, the whole creepy texting shit at the beginning. And then on top of that, the whole little ridiculous scene where they're, like, cooking. It's like, oh, I used to do this a lot when I was little. It's like, all the couples would be sitting up there in the bonfire while I would be uh, lighting the fire. It's like, I always fucking hated that shit. It was like, I was like, and he guys in the background, he's just like, see, this is, I think I'm seeing one of the reasons why you're not married yet. <laughs> like, and even made it was like, all right, listen, guys go get firewood, girls go cook. And, and he guys like, oh, you're splitting them up by male and female. Is, is, is there some, is there some past hatred going on here? <laughs> Granted, he says that in his mind, because, you know, you can't say that shit around here. Hiroshika Sensei, she would beat the crap out of you. Um, also, also, uh, oh girl, what's her name? Hina, the Yaoi fangirl, kind of gets a lot more lines in this episode. Like, for example, Hayato's being his nice guy self, and Komachi comes up to the guy and is like, she's like, she's like, warning, red light, red light, there's no way you can win against a hot guy like that. And he's just like, what the fuck? And then Hina comes out of nowhere and she's like, he's like, the way he's like, she says ook, which I don't know if that's a translation thing or whatever, but she says, like, oh, you have a lazy and, you know, dead face ook. You know, if Hayama were to make a move on you, he'd be all over you. And he'd be like, and Ikigai's like, okay, I, I'll keep that in mind. But the conversation they have at the table when they're all, when they kind of bring up the whole roomy issue to Hiroshika Sensei, uh, was probably one of the more interesting conversation moments because then they're all kind of talking about different ways to, like, help her and bitch bitch face the one I was talking about uh, a while ago I think her actual name is Yumiko which what's up with all the you like the Yumi and like there's a whole bunch of names that start off with like the YU in this anime but that's besides that's besides like Yuki Nosa, Yui, Yumiko uh, 
whatever. <laughs> the conversation they end up having, granted, it leads into them having Yumiko and Yuki Nosha having another argument, but the thing that Yui says in there is what interested me, because she was like, and it's like she's not gonna ask for help, you know, because you know, obviously, you know, with the self, with the service club, it's more of you have to ask for help and then we help you. And you would bring up the fact that like, she's not gonna ask for help because remember, she said she was the girl who was making fun of them. You, she's smart enough to realize she's developing her own personality at this point, and she realizes that how she's not, she doesn't really deserve help when she was putting other kids in the same position before she was ostracized. So she's that type of chick who, she's like one of those, as I said, she's like Sundere. Like she's hard on the outside but soft on the inside. It's not like she doesn't want to make friends, but you know, she's, and he guy brought up a great point. It was like, she's not alone. It's like the problem isn't the fact that she's alone. And I was like, yes, you, thank you. Because no one ever seems to do that. It's always this damn thing about, oh, Oh, she can't be alone. You can't. He's like, no, no one should ever be alone. It's like, no, there's not a problem with being alone. It's the reason why she's alone that's the issue. She's alone, not by choice. She's alone because everyone has ostracized her. And that's the thing. That's the issue. And I, I, I wanted to bring it up because in society, it's always like, you shouldn't be by yourself. You should be inter. You should be talking with others. You should be interacting with others. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with being by yourself. Or being alone or being isolated. The issue is, is more of why you're like that. If you're like that because of, because you choose to, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like that because you were forced into that position, that doesn't help. And she's in this position right now where it's like you, she couldn't make friends if she wanted to. And you brings up the point that maybe it's not because no one wants to help or no one wants to be her friend. It's that certain situations and certain circumstances that are maybe unknown to them is preventing either side from going after the, the other, which, and Yuki Nosha brings it up again at the end of the episode, bringing up that maybe Yui suffered this kind of situation, which made sense because I always figured she was. I mean, the fact that she's still hanging out with Yumiko kills me. It's obvious those two have a different of opinions, and granted, I know you can be friends with two people who don't get along, but the whole issue is that, you know, Yui always came, Yui always came off as a character who had that issue. Like, like, she was that character who would just follow the crowd, but wasn't really a part of the crowd. Um, we also do get some uh, interesting backstory for uh, Hayato and uh, Yuki Noshita. We know that those two have known each other since middle school. We know that those two parents are friends. And we also get a, a slight hint into Yuki Noshita's issues because it's like, oh, you're, the older sister is like the figurehead, whereas Yuki Noshita is like a stand-in for it. Which I know was hinting at something else. And granted, Hiki Guy at the beginning of the episode mentions like, oh, this is where we used to go for like, like I forgot what it was, like summer stuff when we were in middle school. Meaning they all went to the same middle school. Either that or something. I'm not 100% sure. Either that or each middle school just happened to go here at different times. I'm not totally sure how that worked because it seems like Yuki Nosh has been here before. We know Hiki Guy has been here before because he says he's been here before in middle school because she makes some reference to something right before the episode's in she's like he's like I'm glad I got to come back here again and he's like why he, no no she's like I'm glad I got to come back here again I didn't think I'd be able to and he's like why and then she just kind of ignores that question and then it's like good night and he's like good night there's there's obviously some history with this place that has something to do with Yuki Nosta something to do with Hayato because it it's like Yuki, Yuki Noshita understands that Hayato means well, but he all, but she also understands that Hayato is going about it the completely wrong way. And I think Hayato is kind of aware of that too, because that's just how they work. Um, he's also, he hasn't really shown anything. I thought he'd be more of a douchebag than what he is. He's not really that bad of a guy. Then again, we have time and things can lead into it, but usually if he had a douchebag tendency, we would have seen it by now. He just seems to be that nice guy that think that tries to do the right thing. The problem is, is that not his way doesn't necessarily benefit success. You know, a lot of people gravitate towards him because he has that kind of personality, but not necessarily because everything the way he goes about things is right. I mean, obviously, even with Rumi, it was like your your normal way of getting to her would have worked on a normal girl with a normal issue, but you're trying to mess with an isolated 
girl who's being forced to be isolated, it's not going to work the same. You, you, at this point, you put more of a target on her back. Um, but the whole thing, so I'm thinking, I'm not totally sure how this is going to go, if we're just going to get more of Yuki Noshite issue being brought to the light or what. Because the thing about Hiki Guy that I've noticed, this episode is the, is the special one, is there's a lot of things Hiki Guy should be saying out loud, but he's not. And I know it, and it's kind of bothering me because I know that he knows because he's saying it in his mind. And I'm like, oh wait, Hiki Guy is the character that doesn't give a fuck. That's why he's not saying half of the things he thinks out loud. Which is kind of how I used to be about that shit. I used to do that too. It's like, you had an opinion, but you really didn't feel the need to voice it. I mean, granted, they didn't put that much emphasis only on the episode. I'm just saying as a general thing. But... Overall, the episode was good. I mean, I enjoyed it. It's just, it's one of those weird episodes. Uh, the Tosca comedy killed me, man. Like, like at the night scene when they're sleeping next to each other. They're sleeping in, like, the boys are sleeping in the room. And Tosca is, like, lay, curling up like a girl does and saying he got his first name randomly. He's like, Hachiman, Hachiman. And he guy's like, fuck it, I'm not getting any sleep. And that's when he has the conversation with Yuki Noshita. That shit was hilarious. Um, there's just a lot of funny moments. I, I just thought, <laughs> this was a good balance. The Yahalo stuff, which is the scene at the beginning, was just gold for me. That was one of my favorite scenes. Oh, and the lolly scene. Oh my God. That shit caught me off guard when I thought I was like, lolly? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> he was just like, he was like, so that, because y Yui and Yuki Nostra were talking, and then he's just kind of like, and I think they say Laura. I, they're referring to leaves, like a type of leaves, but they say Lorely, like Lorely, where it sounds like Lolly. And he's like Lolly, and they're you know they're cooking for curry. So his image pops up with this fucking, this like this underage girl half naked in a fucking pot of curry, and you're just kind of like. And they're like the lolly fairy. That's what, like the subtitle I think said like the lolly fairy. You were just like, okay, we're done. The game is over. We're done. Anyways, though, good episodes. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. This has been the Insane Game Free Terrell Game Vlogs. Uh, this has been the Vlogs Game for your boy Terrell. That's the gameplay to win. And I will catch you guys later. Peace off. ま、